In a program designed to help patients stop smoking, 190 patients were given sustained care, and 83.7% of them were no longer smoking after one month. Use a 0.10 significance level to test the claim that 78% of the patients stopped smoking when given sustained care. Use the p-value method and use the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. Okay, so let's first take a look at the claim. And so it says to test the claim that 78% of patients stop smoking when given sustained care. So now let's go ahead and write down the given information. So we're using the p-value method. We know that n represents the sample size, which is 190 patients. We know that the point estimate is given to be 83.7% of them that were no longer smoking after one month. So changing that to a decimal is 0.837. And we're testing the claim that 78% of patients stop smoking. So that means that P is going to equal 0.78. And then the complement of that is 1 minus 0.78 which is equal to 0 0.22. Now let's check the requirements. Well, we know that 190 of them were randomly selected. There's a fixed number of independent trials. And then we're going to take n times p and then n times q to make sure it's greater than or equal to 5. Well, 190 times 0.78 gives us 148.2, which is greater than 5. 199.0 times 0.22 gives us 21.56. And that's greater than 5, and therefore the three requirements are satisfied. Now let's state the claim and the opposite of the claim. So the claim is that P is equal to 0 0.78, and the opposite of the claim is that P is not equal to 0 0.78. So now let's use that to determine our null and alternative hypothesis. We know that the null hypothesis always contains the equality. And then we have the alternative. So the equality is in the claim where p is equal to 0 0.78. And then the alternative hypothesis is that p does not equal 0 0.78. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So p equals 0 0.78 for the null and then for the alternative p does not equal 0 0.78 and there is our result now we want to identify the test statistic before we do that let's determine what whether it's a left right or two-tailed distribution the alternative hypothesis tells us that and we see that it's not equals and since it's not equals we know that it's a two-tail test Okay, and then the significance level is alpha, and you can see up here it's 0 0.10. So alpha is equal to 0 0.10. Okay, and now let's determine the test statistic. We know that n is the sample size of 190. We know that the point estimate is 0 0.837. We know that P is equal to 0 0.78, and we know that Q is equal to 0 0.22, so let's plug it into our formula. So we have 0 0.837 minus 0 0.78 divided by the square root of 0 0.78 times 0 0.22 over n which is 190 and then we're going to approximate that to two decimal places so we have 0 0.837 minus 0 0.78 that's in the numerator divide that by the square root of left parenthesis 0 0.78 times 0 0.22 right parenthesis divided by 190 and then let's go ahead and press enter. And then there is our test statistic. 
and then we're going to round that to two decimal places. So if we run it to two decimal places, that means we've got to round this up, round that up to be 1.90. Let's go ahead and check our result. 1.90 for the test statistic. That's what we get. Now we need to identify the p-value. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to draw our bell curve and then label the test statistic. So the test statistic is 1.90. So we're going to shade to the right. But it is a two-tailed test, so that means we have two tails with the same area. So in order to find the p-value, we're going to find the p-value for the right tail and then multiply it by 2. So we want to find the probability of z, or the test statistic, being greater than or equal to 1.90. And then we're going to round that to three decimal places. So let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch. Okay, so we're going to go to Stat, Calculators, and then we're going to go to Normal. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and change the inequality to be greater than or equal to. We're going to put in 1.90 for our test statistic, and we're going to round it to three decimal places to be 0 0.029. And again, since it's a two-tail, we're going to multiply that by 2. So 2 times 0 0.029 gives us 0 0.058. So let's go ahead and put that in there. 0 0.058. There is our p-value, and now we need to state the conclusion. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our p-value, and we need to compare it to the significance level. So our p-value is 0 0.058, and we're comparing it to the significance level of 0 0.10. And you can see that the p-value is less than the significance level. So if the p-value is less or than or equal to the significance level, we'll reject the null. If it's greater than significance level we failed to reject. Well, in this case, it is less than, so we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now we need to determine the conclusion, the rest of the conclusion. And so with the rest of the conclusion, we got to do the following. Okay? we got to first figure out what does the original claim have. Well, the original claim has an equality. And since it ha has an equality, we're going to eliminate at least the ones that say that does not include. So we're going to eliminate the first two. And so we rejected the null. So that means we include the equality and we rejected the null. So it's going to be that statement here. So we would say that we that there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection the claim and then followed by the original claim so we are rejecting the null hypothesis and again there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection so we're going to say there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that 78 percent of patients stop smoking when given sustained care Check our answer, and there is our result.